A worm is a self-replicating form of malware whose main goal is to infect other computers while remaining active on infected systems. Worms mainly exploit the background portions of operating systems and therefore are not noticed until they are already consuming valuable system resources, causing the computer to slow down or completely halt some tasks. Worms generally spread without the need for user interaction. By simply being active on the infected system, a computer worm can easily become widespread. Generally, the most common vector for computer worm is infected storage media, such as floppy diskettes or USB drives. There are many types of computer worms. A computer virus worm hybrid is a form of malware that spreads similarly to a worm. It also modifies program code like a virus. Most modern viruses fall into this hybrid category. This form of malware is not always intentional. This so virus could attach itself to a worm already present on a host system and spread the virus that way. This form of malware is often dubbed Franken malware. Uh, number two is a bot worm, which turns infected computers into zombies, which may be incorporated into a botnet for other attacks. Number three are IM worms, which are sent through instant messaging services and exploit the victim's contact list to further spread. Number four are email worms, which are malware attached to executable files and emails. Net do and how does it work? Stuxnet is a computer worm that was originally aimed at Iran's nuclear facilities and has since mutated and spread to other industrial and energy producing facilities. The original Stuxnet malware attack targeted the programmable logic controllers, PLCs for short, used to automate machine processes. PLCs are how computers interact with and control industrial machinery like uranium centrifuges. The worm alters the PLC's programming, resulting in the centrifuges being spun too quickly and for too long, damaging or destroying the delicate equipment in the process. While this is happening, the PLCs tell the controller computer that everything is working fine, making it difficult to detect or diagnose what's going on until it's too late. Sucksnet reportedly destroyed numerous centrifuges in Iran's uranium enrichment facility by causing them to burn themselves out. Over time, other groups modified the virus to target facilities including water treatment plants, power plants, and gas lines. Who is responsible for the attack? It is now widely accepted that Stuxnet was created by the intelligent agencies of the United States and Israel. The classified program to develop the worm was given the code name Operation Olympic Games. It was started under President George W. Bush and continued under President Obama. Operation Olympic Games was a covert, still unacknowledged campaign of sabotage by means of cyber disruption and was directed at Iranian nuclear facilities by the United States and Israel. While the individual engineers behind Stuxnet have not been identified, we know they were very skilled and they were a lot of them. Kaspersky's lab estimates that it took a team of 10 coders two or three years to create the worm in its final form. Political climate around the attack. It is a dangerous move to play around with cyber attacks, especially when directed against a country like Iran. This is because it sets a precedent of other countries using similar tactics for their own political interests. This is problematic for the U.S. For, for two reasons. Number one, the U.S. has the most to lose, meaning that since the U.S. has proven that Stuxnet works, is cheap, and they can plausibly deny responsibility for it, countries like Russia, China, and Iran could come up with their own version of Stuxnet and advancing their political agendas. The U.S. seems to have no problem with taking on the damage to their foreign policy caused by using Stuxnet. Number two, it undercuts internet freedom. And this refers to the internet freedom agenda that the U.S. Department of State has been promoting in recent years. Stuxnet. Stuxnet is dangerous because it was one of the first pieces of malicious code used to target items affecting the physical world. In this case, the targets were very specific PLCs that Iran used for their centrifuges. Stuxnet took 
great precautions to remain hidden, even copying some of the data in the target network and sending it back on its own, despite manipulating the system that Iran was using itself. The implication of this results in even more sophisticated attacks, potentially even targeting whole power grids in the future. In the media In the media coverage, the Zero Days movie gave an overview of the cyberspace terms and commonly used terminology. Part of the terminology used included the types of actors in cyberspace, including cyber criminals who are looking for quick money, activists engaged for a cause or other reasons apart from money, and nation states usually engaged against infrastructure and looking for sensitive data. The Zero Days movie also described the Stuxnet's worm as being highly sophisticated. They also stated that they found four Zero Day exploits. They also described this as having zero protection against the ex exploit and that it was newly discovered. Other media usually includes decompiled Stuxnet code and the most u notable use was in Black Hat in 2015 when the code was depicted as attacking a nuclear facility plant. The, Ar the Iranian enrichment program was temporarily delayed, but it did not come to a standstill. Iran has also retaliated against the Stuxnet swarm by attacking U.S. banks and financial institutions. Because Stuxnet has become infamous for its level of sophistication and lack of public confirmation, it has led to increased concerns and a desire for a debate about cyber warfare. Recent related, recent related incidents. There has only been one recent incident that I could find related to Stuxnet, and that is, in November of 2018, Iran's critical infrastructure and strategic networks were attacked by Israel with what is reportedly a more sophisticated version of the Stuxnet attack. Iran's head of civil defense agency, Ghulam Reza Jalali, said that this new generation of Stuxnet that was attempting to infiltrate their systems consisted of several components. Stuxnet is important. Stuxnet is important because it is the first act of cyber warfare between countries in which military equipment was physically damaged. Stuxnet poked flaws in existing security assumptions as it was able to damage industrial systems that were not connected to the internet. The prior two cyber attacks that took place before Stuxnet were Operation Aurora and a series of Russian cyber attacks against Georgia. Stuxnet deferred from these attacks because it was able to jump the air gap between isolated systems and affect the system while network administrators were performing updates. Another key difference is that Stuxnet was the first attack to affect the physical environment of the system it was interfering with while being completely undetectable. The implications for this attack are quite scary. For example, a form of malware similar to Stuxnet could be introduced into a vehicle, such as an airplane or car, and cause the device to malfunction at a later date. The other implication is that it could be utilized in damaging food or water processing, but degrading the system or even incorporating toxic additions. Stuxnet was spread by utilizing three of the seven layers covered in glass. The transport layer was used to spread the malware and identify its targets. The network layer was utilized in manipulating process control of the plant. And the physical layer was used to perform the actual damage to the system. The Stuxnet attack is a prime example of how these three later layers can interact with one another to cause true damage to a network environment. Some interesting articles. Some interesting articles and websites we found about Stuxnet are linked on this slide. The Science Direct link provides a compilation of various books and articles about Stuxnet. The website provides a relevant blurb pulled from the book about the Stuxnet attack and provides a link to the actual source where the book can be purchased. 
The secure list link goes into detail on the victims of the Stuxnet attack. It gives a timeline of events leading up to the attack and events after. The McAfee link provides the attack from the perspective of a global computer security software company. It goes into detail about what the worm did, the legacy of the attack, and how industrial networks can further protect against similar malware attacks.